all right so after the registration the browser will now try to attempt to install and then activate the service worker for these pages technically both the installation and activation happens in the same register function we don't have to manually do it ourselves but there are some activities that we can perform once these events occur so our goal is to be able to run this application offline if you set the network mode to offline you will see that currently it's not working let me just go back to the application and inside the service worker section i'll just set it to offline and reload this you'll see this dinosaur page here which means that in an offline network our application does not work that's because we are still trying to access something that's on a server but to get to the server we need a network now with the help of a service worker we'll be able to intercept this request and do something with it so if we do not want this request to fail as in we want it to run even when it's offline we'll need to access this resource from the browser itself so it has to be stored inside the browser storage for that we can use the cache storage but when exactly do we cache these resources we cache them during the service worker installation it's ideal to save all the assets that you'll need to run your application during the installation phase so yeah let's do this inside the service worker file let me just get rid of these two statements and now we'll attach an event listener for the install event. Inside the callback, we'll use a method present on the event object called wait until. So event dot wait until. What this method does is it will keep the service worker in the installing phase until the task is complete. So this method will take a task until and unless this task is not complete, it will keep the service worker in the installing state. And the task that we'll be completing here will be to cache the required resources for our website. So I'll create a function called add resources to cache. And inside this function, I'll open a cache storage instance and add all the files inside the cache. I'll call the cache name v1. And I'll use the add all method to add the resources inside the cache. Now these resources will be coming from the argument here so I need to add it here and we'll be calling this function inside the wait until method so add resources to cache and this will be taking an array now inside this array we'll be passing all our resources the reason why I have this root route and the index.html both inside these cached resources is because we want to cache both the requests when it's pointed to just the domain or even if it's pointed to domain slash index.html. So now if I save this and go back to the browser, you'll find that inside the cache storage, we have the new cache v1 that we created. And inside the storage, you'll see all the paths that we wanted to cache. Now the only thing that's left is to use these files instead of making a request to the server. For that, we'll track the fetch event. So anytime a web page tries to fetch a resource, the request first gets to the service worker we can listen to the request by attaching an event listener for the fetch event. So now the service worker will hijack the request and send back a custom response. So right below the install event listener, I'll add a fetch event listener. And inside the callback, we'll use the respond with method on the event object. So this method is basically going to override the default fetch behavior and it will let you provide a custom response. So inside the method, I'll use caches dot match and this is going to match each request so each fetch request that was supposed to go to the server will now come to the service worker and since we have an event listener for the fetch event we are going to basically try and see if the request path already exists inside the cache if that is the case then we are going to return the cache resource instead of the resource from the server now if i save this and go back to the browser first i'll need to update the service worker so I'll just click on skip waiting. And now if I try to set this to offline and reload the page, you'll see that the application does not go offline. There is no dinosaur page, which means that our application is still running, even though the network is not available. Now, if we go to the network tab, you'll be able to see that the content that we were accessing initially from the server, from the local host server, is now being served from the service worker. So this is what I meant by an offline experience. 
So it's basically going to just take the files that is already present inside the browser, the cache storage from the browser, instead of going to the server and getting the resource back. If I clear the cache and then reset it, you'll see that the request for the globe icon that we had on the tab is failing. That's because the globe icon is not present in my local directory, which is why you'll see that this request fails. Now, if I go back online, you'll see that it still serves the content from the service worker. The contact is image, the contact HTML page, the app.js file, all these files are still being served from the service worker. This is way faster because there's no need to build a connection with the network and then get the resource and then serve it on the client. All these tasks, even though it might seem instantaneous, do take a lot of time and now that we are eliminating the need to have a network, it's much faster. But there might be instances where a new resource gets added to the web page and hence not cached. So ideally you would want to check if the resource exists in the cache. If not, you fetch it from the network and put it in the cache for future requests. So let's do that. I'll be creating a separate function called cache match. So const cache match. I'll just replace this caches match with cache match and we'll have the request here. Now inside this function, I'll first get the cached response. If it exists, then we'll return it or else we'll make a fetch request to get the resource, store it inside the cache and then return it. Now you'll have to use the clone method on the response because this request response stream can only be read once. In order to return the response to the browser and put it in the cache, we have to clone it. So basically the original one is going to get returned to the browser and the clone is going to be sent to the cache. Now if I add a new image to the home page, it will first request it from the network, then it will store it in the cache for any subsequent requests. So let me just add a new image inside the index.html file. So now I have a new image in the index.html file. Now if I go back to the browser, I'll first need to make some changes. So inside my application, inside the cache storage, I'll have to get rid of the index.html file. The reason why I'm doing this is because if I do not remove the index.html file, then it's always going to request this version of the index.html. And inside this version, you can see that there's only one image. So it's never going to make a request for the new image that we added. So in order for the browser to make a new request for the new image, it first needs to have the new version of the index.html because the new image is only present inside the newer version of the index.html. So now when I reload this page, it's going to request the newer version of the index.html, which also has the second image. So it's subsequently going to request the new image as well. Once it requests it, it's going to then cache it inside this storage. So let me just reload this once and you'll see the index.html, the newer one and the new image being added to this cache storage. I'll also need to update the service worker. So let me just do that. And now if I reload inside the cache, actually, let me go to the index page first. So yeah, now I can see that we have the index HTML back. This is going to be the new version with the second image as well, as you can see on the screen here. And the second image itself is also cached inside the storage. So now any subsequent request that we make to this path, even without a network, it's going to work. Now, the only case where none of this will work is if the request does not match with anything in the cache and there's also no network. It's bound to fail at that point and the only thing that we can do in this case is to send a custom response with some message. So inside the service worker file, I'll move the entire part where we try to make a network request inside a try block. And if we do get an error, so this is going to happen when we do not have a network and the file is also not present inside the cache storage. So then we simply can return a custom response. So return and I just send in a message saying that response not found. Let me just save this. Now to demonstrate this, I'll just get rid of the index.html file again from the cache and inside the service worker section, I'll set this to offline. So now when I reload this page, actually before that, I'll need to update the service worker. Yeah. Now when I try to reload this page, first of all, it's going to be an offline experience because I've set it to offline. So it's going to look into the cache storage and see if there's an index.html file. 
as you can see here there is no index html file because i just removed it it's going to throw the error and the error is going to be the message that we are sending so let me just reload this and yeah you can see the response not found the message that we were sending back so ideally it should be a more descriptive message or it can also be a fallback image or a fallback text that you want to show instead of just a plain text and with that we have set up caching with service worker for offline support in the next and the final video of this series we'll take a look at things that happen during service worker updates which i believe is one of the most important parts of this series so yeah do subscribe for that and i'll see you in the next one